Hello. I'm with Bob Metcalf, who is the inventor of Ethernet, or at least one of them anyway, and Faraj Alahi, who's the president and CEO of Aquantia. Bob, can I start with you first? What do you see as being really hot in the Ethernet space right now? But what was uh, really shocking to me is how Ethernet, after 40 years, is, is blossoming and blooming all over the place. And one of the things that's happening is it's getting faster and faster and faster. We, 40 years ago, when we built the first one, Dave Boggs and and I it ran at 2.94 megabits per second, which, by the way, was 30,000 times faster than the day before, and it seemed like a lot, and now I, we watched it go from 2.94 to 10 megabits, and then 100 megabits per second, and then a gigabit per second, and I hear rumors mm -hmm. that it might actually be going to 10 gigabits per second, and then after that, 100, and then <laughs> finally a terabit per second. Uh, so that's exciting, and uh, what's exciting, though, about 40 years of Ethernet is that every time we've made it faster, new applications have blossomed. So it's a, a build it and they will come uh, recurring over and over again, generation after generation, and now we're going to watch it happen again. I hear rumors, Faraj, that uh, you're involved in this uh, process of making it faster and faster. Tell us something about Aquantia. At least, yeah. Um, so Aquantia is focused on developing uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet over copper. Uh, anytime you want to take a technology into mass market and mass adoption, really it needs to kind of run over, at least for, for the foreseeable future, it needs to run over, over copper. Uh, what's been happening over the last 10 years, it's been the data centers have been connecting switches to servers using gigabit Ethernet over CAT6A cable. With the technology that we've developed, you can run 10 times the speed over the same cable infrastructure without changing a thing. You remove an RJ45, you remove the old card, you put the new card in, and plug the RJ45 back in, and you're up running at 10 gigabit per second. It's not 30 times faster than yesterday, but it's 10 times faster than yesterday. Quite fast. Quite fast. So, so when are we going to see, I mean, one gigabit per second is now pretty much blanket table stakes now as far as, as, far as Ethernet's concerned. When are we going to see that level of ubiquity? I think you're going to see it faster than many people think. Um, today we're seeing um, the demand from customers asking for 10 gigabit into the enterprise uh, infrastructure. Uh, one of the, the reasons for that is, is that 802.11 AC, which is the wireless standards, is now uh, can put out an aggregate bandwidth of more than two and a half, more than five gigabit. And whereas before you could connect the back of that access point to your data room using a gigabit ethernet connection, you no longer can do that when, when 802.11ac comes to market. So that has put a tremendous amount of pressure on manufacturers to look for something higher speed. And of course, you know, 10 gigabit ethernet is here. We think given the process technology, the, the experience that we've had with creating, you know, taking 10 GBAC into a mass market situation for the data centers, the, the vendors like us are ready to now take it into the enterprise and, and make it a consumer really great type, uh, type technology in, in 2014, 2015 timeframe. And can we get a little, a little bit down and dirty into the silicon for a second? What are the major challenges involved with running that speed or that amount of, of data through a, through, through a FI? Sure. Um, so, you know, the CAT6A cable was put into all of these data centers thinking it's going to run gigabit Ethernet. Gigabit Ethernet uses the bandwidth up to 80 megahertz. When the um, community started to put 10 gigabit Ethernet standard together, expected the bandwidth over this same cable to go all the way up to 400 megahertz. At 400 megahertz, you're actually using the cable not for what it was manufactured to do, and at the same time, you're starting to be in the band of a lot of uh, noises that were not considered in gigabit Ethernet. So the end result of all of that is is that you created a standard that is a very difficult challenge from analog design perspective, signal processing perspective, just information theory. This technology, 10 GBAC, gets very, very close to Shannon theorem. So it's obviously very difficult technology to master, but I'm, I'm happy to say and proud to say that you know our company has been at the forefront of this thing. Today is the market leader in 10 GBAC. Our devices are used in almost every server manufacturer out there. Many of the switches that are shipping uh, embody that technology, and, and we brought it to mass market adoption level at this point. And I have it on pretty good authority from my researchers that you're actually involved in, uh, your, your, your silicon is actually on the motherboard of, um, of a, a certain um, um, Santa Clara company's uh, uh, products. Well, uh, I can't comment uh, on specifics, but um, what I can tell you is that 
uh, in the market situation today, uh, we have a uh, tremendous market share. We've shipped more than GBST than all of our competitors combined. And, and we believe that by keeping it the leading edge of technology and continuing to innovate, that we can hold that position and become really the leader uh, for a sustainable time on this market. Thanks, Faraj. And, and Bob, to bring you back in, what, what, what's, your, what's your take on all this? How do you see this playing out in the future? Well, when will my Macintosh, you know, I currently plug a, in, an RJ45 into my Mac and it automatically figures out whether it's running at 10, 100 or 1,000. When will I be able to do that and it go to 10 gig? So, um, like I said, in the enterprise or, say, consumer uh, level, I think 2000, late 2014, 2015, you'll see uh, this capability on on devices manufactured by computer manufacturers who want to put uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet on. And it will be able to detect whether it's talking to a 10, 100 gigabit or 10 gigabit device and adjust itself accordingly. And are there, are there applications other than uh, Wi-Fi backhaul that are pushing, pushing people to go to 10? Yeah, um, there's actually um, one of the things that we've, we've heard a lot talked about is um, people like to be able to retrieve, for example, the video, their video archive from storage devices. And that storage device, for all practical purposes, frankly, could be their you know, 500 gigabyte or a terabyte hard drive sitting on their PC uh, this day and age. And, and they want to be able to access that very quickly and be able to display that, say, on a, on a monitor device. And, uh, and those are the, one of the applications, for example, that drives the, the need for 10 gigabit. And I want to hear from you, Bob, as to wh where you see this going in the future. Uh, let's see. That seems like an easy question. We're busily, you, you, <laughs> we're busily going from 1 to 10, and when we're done with that, then we would go from 10 to 40, maybe. That's correct. And then maybe 10 to 100, and then 100, and then terabit per second. Uh, so uh, what I've been saying uh, recently is that we're busily uh, gigifying the internet. So what, what do you think comes after gigifying the internet? Terrifying the internet. <laughs> that would be next. Okay, well you heard it here first. Bob Metcalf predicts we're going to terrify the internet and we're certainly going to see 10 gig everywhere inside most computers.